Welcome to Geoscience Australia's Exploring for the Future virtual roadshow. Before we begin today's science plenary, I would like to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm speaking to you today, the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people, and note that their living cultures are amongst the oldest in human history. People have met in this region, exchanged ideas, wisdom and insights for thousands of years, and our gathering today will sustain this tradition. I pay respect to the Aboriginal elders of the community and extend my recognition to their descendants, future leaders, and other Indigenous people who are present with us today. I'm Andrew Heap, Chief of Minerals, Energy and Groundwater Division, and following me is Richard Blewett, Branch Head for Mineral Systems, and David Robinson, Branch Head for Basin Systems. Today, we will show you some of the significant outcomes and groundbreaking discoveries from Geoscience Australia's Exploring for the Future program. This has been an enormous undertaking across a vast area of Australia's landmass. And right at the start, I want to acknowledge and thank everyone that has supported us and made it all possible. Geoscience Australia acknowledges the traditional custodians of the country wherever you are watching this and wherever this work was undertaken. I also thank the many individuals and communities across remote and rural areas of Australia that helped us access the country. And finally, I thank our state and territory colleagues for their vital collaborations and contributions that have made this program such a success. Why are resources important? I want to start this presentation by setting the scene for the Exploring for the Future program, including why such a program is essential to su supporting Australia's economy. Unlocking Australia's mineral, energy and groundwater resources is essential to driving economic growth, job creation and ongoing infrastructure and community development. The minerals, energy and agricultural sectors accounted for 11% of Australia's GDP in 2018 and 19, contributing $330 billion worth of exports and employing over half a million people. It is vital that we maintain a prosperous and secure minerals, energy and agricultural sectors to secure our energy, water and food needs and provide the minerals necessary for a low emissions, high tech future. The recent challenges we've faced in response to natural disasters and the COVID-19 pandemic has reinforced the need for a pathway to strong and ongoing economic growth. By bringing innovative science and technology together to identify new, potentially vast, resource opportunities in Australia, the Exploring for the Future program equips us with the data and knowledge to underpin growth in these sectors and thereby accelerate the nation's economic recovery. Identifying and understanding our vast wealth of resources will ensure a steady pipeline of projects and jobs well into the future. Much of Australia's current resource wealth is based on discoveries and developments from several decades ago in geologically well-known and relatively well-explored areas. It can take a decade or more for a new resource to go from discovery to development. This graph is for worldwide mineral discoveries, but the same trend applies in Australia. It shows that there have been no tier one resource discoveries for nearly 30 years. In fact, over 80% of Australia's current mineral production is derived from mines discovered prior to 1980, largely in areas where the resources are relatively close to the surface. Apart from the recent development of coal seam gas, it's a similar story for the Australian energy sector. So, for a world looking to mineral resources to drive a transition to low emission energy sources and high tech communications and manufacturing, this is a major challenge. Clearly, we need to be doing something different regarding exploration to drive these new discoveries, particularly of discoveries of new Tier 1 deposits. In Australia, the big untapped opportunity lies in greenfield areas, areas that are unexplored or underexplored. This also includes where resources may be buried deep in the crust or under cover, and these areas span about 80% of Australia's landmass. For example, this is starkly illustrated in the areas such as the Barclay Tablelands in northern Australia, shown in this slide, where there are no outcropping rocks, but possibly geological structures beneath the surface that hold the next Olympic Dam, Mount Isa, Cooper Basin or major groundwater aquifer. Searching for resources in greenfield areas is like the story of a person who is looking for the keys on the dark road. They can only search where the light is. Geoscience Australia's role is to help illuminate that search through the provision of pre-competitive geoscience data to de technically de-risk greenfield areas and therefore stimulate additional exploration investment. The Exploring for the Future program is about extending our geoscience knowledge into these greenfield areas 
to innovate and develop the tools that shine a light into the earth to open up that search space for resources. By developing a better understanding of the regional geology, we'll give people greater confidence to target their exploration activities, develop their projects, or plan their next development opportunity. The Exploring for the Future program has focused on using new thinking to develop a holistic understanding of the resource potential across the three disciplines of minerals, energy, and groundwater. This is because scientifically, there are many connections. For instance, a small groundwater sample may contain traces of minerals and hydrocarbons from deep below the surface. And the same tools used to search for mineralization can also indicate the presence and quality of groundwater. We set out to deliver an integrated resource potential assessment, a prospectus, if you like, for Northern Australia. And I'm pleased to say that we have delivered on that aim. We have acquired and delivered a vast array of new pre-competitive geoscience data and knowledge to identify and develop the next generation of mineral, energy, and groundwater projects. The program has harnessed Geoscience Australia's considerable scientific skills and technical capabilities in geology, hydrogeology, geophysics, geochemistry, and information technology, augmented by more than 70 years' worth of in-house data and samples. We have brought all this work together in an integrated package as an online data discovery portal that also includes innovative multi-criteria assessment tools. You will hear more about the portal and how it can be used within and across disciplines later in this talk. I would encourage you to have a look afterwards and try your own multidisciplinary exploration. Creating this prospectus of potential minerals, energy and groundwater resources for Northern Australia has been an enormous undertaking. The Exploring for the Future program has been one of the largest and most complex geoscience programs in the world. Over its four year period, a total of 21 collaborative activities worth more than $69 million have mapped the geology of Northern Australia, covering over 2 million square kilometres, or more than a quarter of Australia's land mass. Activities ranging from semi-continental surveys to targeted integrated projects have generated data that we are putting into the hands of stakeholders through the innovative dedicated online data portal I mentioned earlier. Since the release of the data sets from the program, 14 companies have picked up new acreage in areas where new data were collected, with 10 of these companies publicly attributing that data as key to applying for their acreage. Seven of the publicly attributed new tenement acquisitions are in the East Tenant area that was the focus of a detailed, integrated study as part of the program. The collective area of exploration tenements taken up due to products from the program is more than 80,000 square kilometres. That's greater than the area of Tasmania. Our groundwater assessment work is already leading to better outcomes for remote communities in the region between Tennant Creek and Alice Springs. New data are being used to plan additional and sustainable water sources for those communities, and is pointing to the prospect of new water sources for agriculture and horticulture in the region. The impact of this work has been astounding, and I'm excited to be building on this through the recently announced $125 million extension and expansion of the program. This new investment will allow us to build this resource perspective for the entire country. You will hear more about how we achieve the aim of producing the resource perspectives for Northern Australia through the first phase of the Exploring for the Future program, and the fantastic new science and technology we used along the way in the rest of this plenary talk, and in more detail at the, at the Roadshow webinars during the week. So right now, I'll hand over to Dr. Richard Blewett, Branch Head of Mineral Systems at Geoscience Australia, to lead you through the exciting science and breakthroughs in better understanding the mineral resource potential across Northern Australia. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. The science of Exploring for Future has been really exciting. We've looked at a systems approach, an integrated systems approach for energy, groundwater and minerals. And it's important that we've taken this systems approach and an integrated one at that. Because what systems allow us to do is to make predictions about potential for minerals, energy and groundwater. And they do this by looking at the critical processes that are necessary to create these resources. We then try and look at proxies to those processes and collect data appropriate for that proxy so that we can map across vast areas of northern Australia and to great depth. And in fact, we've gone 
right down to the bottom of the, the Australian plate, the lithospheric mantle, down to more than 200 kilometres. And I'll show you some pictures of some of the exciting science that we've been able to do and bring together the, across those three themes to answer really key science questions for the resource potential for northern Australia. But we haven't done this alone in the sense that all this technology was available. We've had to build a whole toolbox to enable us to do it. And I'll show you some of those uh, technologies that we've, we've built. And the extra important piece about that is that now this is, these generic school, uh, tools enable us to apply this elsewhere, which is really important now going forward in the extended Exploring for the Future program, that we'll be able to build on that capability across all of Australia. So we've gone across northern Australia and we've also probed deep into its depths. We've flown across it, driven across it and sampled it with a drill hole or with rock hammers. And what this has given us is an unprecedented view of vast areas of northern Australia of the surface. And incredible data sets that we've been able to compile and integrate and make derivative products of to tell us a lot about the uh, incredible surface of Australia. And just peeling away that surface, looking into the basins and the cover, we've been able to probe into the, the, the deeper parts and going even deeper, the data sets, into the crystalline crust and even deeper still into the upper mantle. And it turns out the upper mantle is really important for understanding the, the disposition of resources uh, across Australia and particularly northern Australia. We've collected these wonderful data sets and of course they're great as a geologist, I look at these things and, and can make awesome inferences from this. But what we really want to be able to do is make all this amazing data really useful to many people. Not only really useful, make it usable and ultimately used. So we take a wonderful landscape like the Barclay, we see here the seismic trucks going across this and we wonder, if I was the investment manager sitting say in New York or London, what's the next big opportunity out under there? Or I'm the exploration geologist sitting in Perth, where should we drill? Or I'm the landholder on whose land this is, what are the resources on my land? Or the indigenous people whose this is their land, what does this mean for my community? The government policy officer, how does the government guide any development that may come from this work? Importantly, the natural resource manager, how do we plan for development? Academics, we've worked very closely with the uh, academic community in the universities, both domestically and globally. How can this data help their research and how can they help us advance what we're trying to do in terms of understanding the Australian resource potential? And the Minister's advisor, how can we achieve the government's goals through these wonderful data sets? So we've built a toolbox that allows us to be able to answer those questions and in the uh, case study that I'll give, a minerals case study, I'll just show one of those toolboxes which is our Exploring for the Futures portal and you can see the URL below. Uh, the case study that I'm going to give is a, a minerals one and it's a hypothetical one. It's uh, uh, taking it from a, a mine trying to come up with the generation of the project through the exploration and the discovery process to the feasibility and working out the economics of it to I've got a mine and, and potentially the rehab rehabilitation and the production and monitoring of that. So I'll just touch on uh, some of the tools and, te and technologies that we've built around the data sets using this as an example for the minerals case study. My colleague David Robinson will be talking about groundwater and energy case studies. So moving right along, this exploration geologist is asking the question, uh, the project generation geologist, where would I go in Australia? It's a vast, vast big place. Well, in the portal we've built a, uh, a multi-criteria assessment tool around mineral potential. So all those wonderful data sets, the proxies to the process I was talking about are mapped into, into this uh, toolbox. And you're able to select what you think are important uh, elements or criteria that are proxies to the process that allow you to identify where the great potential is. And from that we're able to generate wonderful maps. So this is an, a, a map of the nickel, copper and platinum group potential for all of Australia, in fact. These maps really matter. They actually drive investment. And we know the deposits around uh, just east of Perth, which weren't, uh, were unknown, uh, have now been discovered on the basis of this work. So this is a, a tre tre tremendous capability for, for investment. Let's go in and look at one of those areas, take it back up to uh, Central Australia. There's a real hot spot in there uh, that we didn't know about. 
we can go in and actually query the data. We've built the toolboxes and querying the data to see what are the elements of the data that, allow, that, that actually lead to that really high uh, hotspot. So the red colours are the more favourable areas and the bluer colours less favourable. Having said that, there may not be data coverages where the blue areas are, so we need to be mindful of that too. So let's zoom in on that, that, that area and that, that red hotspot. And let's look, the toolbox, the, the, the portal, what we've been able to draw on is a, is a vast array of other web services and data sets that Geoscience Australia or our partners hold and put the road infrastructure on, the pipelines and, and railways that you want to connect to. Where are the national parks? Am I going to be able to explore there? Also importantly, where are the tenements? Who else has got the ground? Is there free ground? Or if it's not, who would I partner with? So those are the sorts of questions that a, a, a project generation geologist might ask. They might think, OK, so this has got legs, uh, but what is the economics? So I've got a disclaimer here around a piece of technology that we've built, which is economic fairways. So it's adding the economics to uh, potential. And this has worked very much closely with our partners at Monash University. So it's, again, using this multi-criteria assessment toolbox as part of the portal. And we ask a hypothetical question, in this case, around a nickel deposit. We just saw about nickel. And a fairly standard one, a, a 10 million tonne, 1.5% nickel. You can play with the uh, rates of returns, the um, exchange rates, your discount cash value in your company, uh, the metal price, and so on, and come up with an economic fairways map. And so here we go. And these work really pretty quickly. Uh, the blue areas, you, would, you wouldn't make money. The white areas up to the red areas, you basically uh, make money. The white areas being break even for this scenario. So it allows you, having these, this capability allows the project generation geologist to think, yes, if there is a, something there, I could make money out of this. I'm willing to be able to invest in that. I can get investors to invest in that. So let's zoom in on that, that, you know, that area in central Australia. And most of the region, Luckily, is, uh, it would be economic. There's a few little blue areas you can see on the map that perhaps uh, using those criteria that we selected wouldn't make money. OK, so we've decided we're going to go there. It's going to make money. It's looking like a go. What can I do to start my exploration process? Well, Geoscience Australia has a wealth of data in the, in the portal, and we're able to, to draw from our wealth of data that we've already had, and we can surf from other, other uh, web services and you can ha harness that data and start uh, exploring from that basis. Many, many reports are, are, have been loaded into the portal, so you, again, you can get a uh, one-stop shop for a lot of the information and read all that and access the data packages. Zooming in a little bit, we've built some analytical tools that allow the exploration geologist to see you know, whether the rocks are really going to come up to mustard. So we're just looking in here at the inorganic chemistry, and we can lasso the, the, the chemical points that we've got there and start plotting one thing against another. It turns out the rocks are favourable. We've got these rocks we call gabbros and diorites. They're the sort of rocks we'd expect to be hosts to this nickel mineralisation. We can visualise immense data sets, not only in 2D but in 3D. I think for the first time we've got an in-browser web, uh, web delivery uh, 3D visualisation system. So think Google Earth, think of it on steroids. And we can go not only at the surface with many, many layers, but into, into the surface in true 3D. And here's an example of the absolutely amazing OzAEM uh, program that we've been flying. Uh, one of many data sets that you can visualise in 3D. You can also visualise the drill holes that would be in this area, and then go in and query those drill holes, and what do we know about it? We're still planning for our exploration. I'm going to put some drill holes in. How deep is the cover? So we can start interrogating the, the, the models and seeing how, the, how, how thick the cover is, what it's made up of. We can also draw cross sections through, through, through that. OK, so we've got, got this mine. We've discovered it now. We've moved on to the third phase. We're going to now plan for some infrastructure, a particular road we want to build or a particular route. We've built, again, some capability using this multi-criteria assessment for a whole uh, set of criteria that you'd select. And again, you can play with the, the dials, you can switch them on and off and generate uh, route maps, favourable route maps. And you can do it multiple times and generate a report. It's really important. We, we're, we're in this area. We're going to impact um, land. We're going to impact people, potentially. Who's there? Who cares about this? Well, 
we've been able to tap into other databases that Geoscience Australia holds, and the ABS and other government uh, agencies, and tap into that wealth of information across the web. And so you can select around agriculture, buildings, businesses, the environment, the infrastructure, and uh, institutions that are in that, in that uh, polygon that I've selected, and generate reports. So you can find out about who's involved, what their education levels are, where the hospitals are, how many hospitals, et cetera, et cetera. In really important for, for planning, uh, for who you would talk to in terms of the community. So again, this is uh, an important part of the, uh, generating these social reports. So imagine the mine's up and going. We've got wonderful baseline data in there that you're able to benchmark against as a, a, this mine is operating. This is an example, again, drawing from some other data sets across Geoscience Australia, the Digital Earth Australia uh, satellite archive, and you're able to go in and look and use the pixel drill tool and see when water was in the landscape. And in this case, it's water in tailings dams. So you'd be able to track these and then be able to uh, have an eviden evidential proof of, of, of change to an environment. So it's part of the monitoring that we're able to, I guess, service, provide to, uh, to a range of stakeholders. And this is open to anybody. So I hope you've seen from the, the minerals case study that there's a heck of a lot there. Uh, we've got this fantastic toolbox that we've built on those wonderful data. It's leading us to making these predictions. There's many predictions we could make. We've got many other mineral system types that we're, we've put into the portal, uh, and decisions can be made across a whole range of northern Australia from the basis of this. So I'm going to hand over to my colleague, David Robinson, and he's going to talk about the energy and the groundwater case studies. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Richard. In my part of the presentation, I will provide some case studies on our energy and our groundwater work in Northern Australia. I'll begin with the energy work. At the start of the Exploring for the Future program, when we were mapping out what we would focus on, we had a look at the region and identified those basins that we thought were prospective for hydrocarbons but had a lack of data available and that that lack of data was an inhibitor for future investment. We identified five basins. We identified the Canning Basin, the Birindudu Basin, the MacArthur Basin, the South Nicholson Basin and the Isa Province. These became the focal basins for our energy program. You heard from Richard earlier uh, a lot about different tools. One of the, the most important tools we used in the energy program is onshore seismic. This tool allows us to image within the earth. It's a lot like an ultrasound and to learn something about uh, the underground that we can't see from the above. So we had a look at the seismic that was available. You can see on this slide the light grey lines. Uh, a lot of seismic already collected in the north, but there were some very large and obvious gaps which we filled in the Exploring for the Future program. These are seen in the red, green and black lines. So in the black is the South Nicholson seismic. It's 1,100 kilometres of seismic. In the green, the Barclay seismic. This is one of our most recent products. It was only released in the last month. And also, uh, in the red, the Canning seismic, uh, an 870-kilometre line. To give you an idea of some of the things that we learn from this seismic, I'll show you some pictures of the South Nicholson. So we start to get the image of the basin, we can see the architecture, we can see its geometry, and we can learn things about it that we didn't know beforehand. So in particular, in this area, we've discovered that this basin is three times larger than we previously thought. That's three times the potential search space for hydrocarbons. In addition, we identified a sub-basin in that region, the Carrara sub-basin, which in its own right has the potential to deliver hydrocarbons. So these are two big findings that came directly from that seismic work. I will now show you another example, the Canning seismic in Western Australia. This is one long seismic line across a very large basin. This time we were looking at the layers in the basin and the seismic tells us something about the size and the thickness of those layers. So consider one of these layers. 
the Ordovician gold wire formation. We know already that that formation or the rocks in that layer are prospective for hydrocarbons. We've seen that elsewhere in the basin. This new seismic has told us that that layer is actually larger than we thought it was. It is in fact 22% larger than previously thought, which gives us again a larger search space in which we can find potential hydrocarbons. But more than that, in this basin, there are other layers there that have the potential to, the, to the deliver hydrocarbons also. So all of those layers shown in different shades of green are a similar age and all potentially could uh, be good source rocks for hydrocarbons as well. So the next part of the project in this area was to drill. We drilled to a depth of 2,680 metres, taking samples from various layers in that region. Those samples are now going through the process of geochemical analysis, which will tell us in detail what the potential is for them to host hydrocarbons. What does this geochemistry look like? Well, here is an example of the geochemistry. I flicked back to the area in South Nicholson now because we have the geochemical work is a bit more mature. Here, we've run a geochemical analysis campaign as well. This time, we've gone to the drill core libraries. So we've accessed old cores from old drilling programs and undertaken new geochemical analysis. We've combined that with existing analysis that had already been taken and brought it all together to those two graphs you see on the right of the slide. In the centre is the graph for the South Nicholson region and on the right is the, the graph for the MacArthur Basin. You see a number of things here. First of all, there's a lot more data in the MacArthur than there is for the South Nicholson. That's a sign that it's a bit more mature in its understanding. Secondly, those graphs tell us something about the hydrocarbon potential of the individual samples or the individual rock units. The more you are to the right in the graphs, the higher their potential is for hosting hydrocarbons. The more you are to the top, the more oil prone they will be. And the further you are to the bottom, the more gas prone they will be. And in the middle, you get a combination of gas and oil. And what we're seeing across this region is that uh, both of those areas have a broad range of different possibilities for further exploration. One last piece of this puzzle is the stratigraphy. Before we started this work, in that area, each of those subregions had their own stratigraphic classification system. So the MacArthur, the South Nicholson and the Isa were all classified differently. This meant that it was impossible to make comparisons from one to the other. Our program has undertaken new dating studies of samples from those regions and helped to bring them together to a single classification. That means we can now compare one region to another and in particular identify where we're seeing the same rocks across those regions. So for example, this study has helped us to identify that the South Nicholson region has more than double the amount of Isa style rocks than we had previously realised. And as a result of that, then the fact that we know the Isa rocks are already pros prospective, this tells us a great deal about the future prospectivity of that South Nicholson region. In closing the energy uh, presentation, I'd just like to present something from the portal. We heard a lot from Richard earlier about the portal and its power. This is one of the energy examples in the portal. It's, it's the Source Rock Atlas. It represents the bringing together of national geochemical data sets for the very first time. Previous to this work, we had, we had our geochemical analysis all as disparate reports, which made those comparisons across regions very difficult. Now we're delivering it in a single place, in the portal, along with a bunch of analytical tools which helps people to understand this geochemical data and potentially will help industry compare their new samples to samples that already exist. I'm going to move now from energy to groundwater. The groundwater work across Northern Australia was undertaken in a number of regions. You can see them here outlined in black. 
In this presentation, I'm going to focus on three regions and I'm going to, to talk about how the groundwater work in Alice Springs is helping the community identify and better manage water for their own use. So uh, drinking water, water that is uh, feeding directly into their houses. In the Western Davenport example, I will talk about how a better understanding of groundwater is going to open up new opportunities for agricultural development. And in Queensland, where you see the McBride and Nulla provinces, I will talk about how our new understanding of groundwater will help us to improve environmental management practices in that area. That region in Queensland, uh, I will refer to from time to time as the Upper Burdekin. So first, the Alice Springs example. And much like the examples that Richard ran through at the beginning of the presentation, what we're talking about here is the use of multiple disciplines, multiple different techniques to try to understand the groundwater systems in the region. We see a few examples here on this slide. On the left, some more airborne electromagnetics. Down in the far right, you've got stratigraphic drilling. Just to the left of that, you've got sampling of water. And up above, you have a graph that shows um, groundwater table heights, how they're changing over time, and rainwater, uh, rainwater fall levels. So combining all of this information together, as well as a, a variety of other techniques, helps us to do things like this which is build three-dimensional models of the geology in the region and the hydrogeology in the region. And that understanding starts to tell us about where the groundwater is, how it's moving from one place to another, and helps us to identify places where there are new sources of groundwater, as well as helps to inform the overall management of, of that groundwater system. And in the Alice Springs, I'm pleased to say that as a result of exploring the future, we, these new insights will help to better manage the water in that area and help to identify new water supplies for the Alice Springs and, and surrounding regions to support those communities moving forward. In the second example, in Western Davenport, uh, similar story, the application of multiple techniques to try to understand the groundwater systems. Here, in the Western Davenport region, we've been able, again, to identify new water supplies, uh, water supplies in the groundwater that have the potential to support new agricultural development and fast track investment in that region. Not only have we identified these new sources of water, we've also helped to identify a number of locations which are highly suitable for managed aquifer recharge. In managed aquifer recharge, or MAR, we're talking about underground dams and we're talking about making use of the earth as a place to store water so that when there's excess surface water in the region, when they get occasion, occasional high downpours or flooding, we can capture that water, we can store it underground, and we can firm up the long-term water security to support those potential agricultural investments that I talked about earlier. In the next example, in the Upper Burdekin, Multiple disciplines again, an improved understanding of the groundwater system. In this case, an enhanced understanding of the McBride and Nulla provinces, how they interact with one another, how that groundwater is supporting groundwater dependent ecosystems and how it is flowing into the tributaries for the Burdekin River, a very important river in that region. This new understanding is expected to inform an update to the water catchment plan in the Burdekin region. A water plan that will help people to use the groundwater in a way that maintains the best possible environmental practices and best possible environmental protection for those groundwater dependent ecosystems. Like the minerals and energy examples that came earlier, all of this data is being made available through the portal. You can see here an example of the groundwater geochemistry. Similar story to, to the energy geochemistry. For the first time, 
we're starting to build together these data sets in a nationally consistent way. Starting in Northern Territory and through the extension and expansion of the Exploring for the Future program moving into the southern parts of Australia. So that for the first time we'll have a national consistent understanding of groundwater geochemistry. The different colours in these graphs tell us things like the age of the groundwater and how long it takes to get replaced. They tell us something about the processes and how the groundwater is moving underground and they help us to identify different regions that are unique from one another that aren't connected. A highly powerful tool which we are hoping to deliver at a national scale. Another groundwater example the airborne electromagnetics shown here in three dimensions for the Howard East project up in Darwin. The different colours here tell us different levels of conductivity in the earth which inform things like the structure but also the potential for water and whether it's saline or fresh water. This alone, this tool alone does not answer all those questions but combined with the others it can answer important questions around that that region. I'd like to summarise our presentation now. The Exploring for the Future program is an exciting science program of unprecedented scale, scope and integration. Integration across groundwater geoscience, minerals and energy systems. We have significantly improved our understanding of Northern Australia's resource potential for all three of those resources, as well as informing things like how best they can be accessed. We have built a new portal for data delivery and decision support that we expect to be used by industry, by governments and by landholders. This work is world leading other countries are watching and they have come to ask us about our programs and some are now trying to replicate. Our work has also created jobs. It's created jobs while we've run this program. We have employed people in the regions and in fact the majority of our funding has been spent in the regions to do this work. We know and in fact, we have already seen that industry off the back of this data is starting to make investments in these regions. They will now undertake their own exploration and research campaigns to better understand those regions at a finer scale and they will continue to employ people while they do this. And if they're successful, if they find what they're looking for, and we believe they will, they will move into a development phase which will continue to deliver jobs for the decades to come. I'd like to encourage you now to watch the other presentations in our Exploring for the Future virtual roadshow series. There are themed presentations being delivered on energy, groundwater and on minerals and there is also an expert panel to discuss the program more broadly. Each of these themed roadshows will have a Q&A session, so please log on live if you can and ask lots of questions. They'll also be recorded and available thereafter. In addition, I encourage you to have a look at our portal. Play with the data, see if it helps you to solve your problems and if it if it does, let us know. If it doesn't, let us know. We have another four years to run with this program and we will continue to improve the portal and ensure that it is useful to help you with your decision making. All of this information can be found on the EFTF website. Thank you.